It's that time of class everyone loves where we get to start working with formulas again. This time, rather than working with derivatives, we will be working with the antiderivatives, which you may be excited about if you didn't like derivatives, but it turns out you will probably like these less. Now, what are antiderivatives? What are integrals? What are they kind of asking us about? And so the way the questions in this section will be framed most of the time, basically they always boil down to something like this. Find a function whose derivative is 3x squared. Something like this. Now, if this was your task, you might just start kind of by a guess and check method. Like, well, what about x to the fifth? What's the derivative of x to the fifth? Well, my rules tell me that that's 5x to the fourth. So, I'm getting close. What about x to the fourth? Eh, 4x cubed. I'm closer, right? But neither of these are right my actual answer is going to be x cubed. If I take the derivative of x cubed, I'll get 3x squared. Now, it's kind of a trick question, but you could give me another answer too and be perfectly right. Um, that answer would be anything, x, anything along these lines. x cubed plus, let's say, 32. Right? If I take the derivative of x squared plus 32, what do I get? I just get 3x squared. The 32 goes away. So the answer that we're going to be giving in this section most of the time will be something along the lines of x cubed plus c. And the c here is just any fixed constant. It's a little bit different than the x. Basically, we're just saying you could put any number there, and you could take the derivative of this, and you would get that out. Now, the way you might see this problem, this question, actually given in web work, is something along the lines of if little f of x was 3x squared, find the antiderivative big F of x. And all that we want you to write here is say, well, big F of x is going to be x cubed plus c. Because, as we were just saying up here, if I take the derivative of this, I will get little f of x. Now, they might ask you the same exact question here. Uh, they don't use little f and big F, but this is the same thing. Notice that this integral doesn't have any bounds on it, with kind of, which kind of changes things a little bit. And so when we take the integral of 3x squared dx, we just want to enter 3x or x cubed plus c because if I take the derivative of this, I will get that out. Now, what are the basic rules that we're going to have to work with, right? So derivatives, we had lots of rules. Here are the basic formulas. I'm going to not necessarily kind of explain too much about the formulas yet. I'll kind of uh, kind of show you later on what you need to be worried about. So with x to the n, something like x to the tenth our formula will be x to the n plus 1, so you increase the power by 1. Kind of remember when we had x squared, we increased the power by 1, but you're going to need to divide by n plus 1. And so we'll, we'll see why this happens in a little bit. We'll make sure to add that c. So here, our n is equal to 10. So by our formula, I'd have x to the 11th over 11, right? x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus c. And kind of let's check our work here, just in our minds. So let's check if I take the derivative of x to the 11th over 11 plus c, what am I going to get out, right? So I will get out, I'll drop that 11 down, so I'll have 11 x to the 10th divided by 11, and the, z and the c goes away, right? And now these two 11s will cancel out, and I'll just get x to the 10th, right? So when I, when I take the derivative of this side, I get this, which is exactly what I want. So let's go to some of these other rules, and you could you could go and check your work in those other rules as well. Um, but the integral or the antiderivative of k will be k times x plus c. So if we had the integral of 5, we would just get something like, well, we would get 5x plus c, not something like it. 1 over x, a little bit trickier. This is going to be the ln of x, kind of, uh, you're going to need absolute values around this, and the reason for the absolute values are kind of about what uh, numbers you're allowed to throw into an ln. Um, don't worry about it too much, just remember that they need to be there. And uh, we'll add a c onto that as well. And so if I had to take the integral of x to the negative first, it would really be like taking the integral of 1 over x dx, and this would be an ln, right? So the big thing you should be saying here to check your work is, if I take the derivative of an ln, do I get 1 over x out? Yes, you do. The final rule will be 1 over k e to the kx plus c. So if I had something like find the antiderivative of e to the 2x, 
what do you get out? Well, we'd have 1 over k e to the kx. And we'd want to check our work. So let's check, does the derivative of 1 over 2 e to the 2x plus c, what does that equal? And so this is going to be equal to 1 half. I'm going to bring down the 2, 2 e to the 2x, and the c would go away, right? And so here, my 1 half and my 2 would cancel out, and I would get e to the 2x. Now, if you're having trouble seeing that the derivative of this is this, you might want to go back and look at some of the derivative videos, but we're just kind of getting a basic feel for how this works.